by the tune of 76 to 14. Oh my. The Golden Hurricane did bring some unexpected rain, made things a little nasty for the crowd, but believe me, they got happy in a hurry. Derek Schmidt began this party seven minutes into the first quarter with a mere 46 yard field goal, three zip FSU. You know, after the Memphis State game, Bobby Bowden said his players were abused. Tonight, they did the abusing. Garth Jacks on the sack, a loss of eight. On the next play, Tulsa's Richie Stevenson punted. Now watch freshman Deion Sanders work magic. He hauls it in at the 40 and breaks outside, appears to be gone. But Terry Robinson, his own man, slows him down a bunch. He still picked up 34 yards before Stevenson made the saving tackle. He should have saved himself the trouble. On the next play, Eric Thomas, making his first start of the year, found a wide open, I mean wide open, Pat Carter for a 26-yard touchdown. He literally could have crawled in. It took all of four seconds. Now, point after attempts never make the highlights, except when it's a record attempt. Derek Schmidt converts for his 57th straight. A new FSU standard, it was 10 to nothing. Then the fun began. Tulsa quarterback Steve Gage, who couldn't breathe all night, trying to hit his tight end over the middle. But Stan Schreiber goes up, up, and muscles it away for the interception. Two INTs on the night for Schreiber. A couple of work plays later, Pensacola freshman Victor Floyd turned that mistake into points. Following excellent blocking by Pat Carter and Jamie Dukes, he goes in untouched from two yards out, 17 zip FSU. Now here's the closest this game ever got. Tulsa's Rodney Young busted up the gut, shakes off a couple of tackles, first by Fred Jones and then Greg Newell. He battles in from 14 yards out and was 17-7. Following another long Deion Sanders punt return, Tony Smith did the honors from six yards out, 27-7. Stan Schreiber picked off another Tulsa pass. And again, Tony Smith made the most of it, popping it up the middle for a 20-yard score. It was 34-7. to Smith had a terrific game, 147 yards in the first half alone. Then with time ticking down in the first half, Eric Thomas hit Hassan Jones, who stretches his body to the limit. He pulls in a 34-yard TD strike, 41-7 to at halftime. Now, everybody was scurrying for the record book to find out the most points ever scored by an FSU team. Officially, it was 66 against Memphis State in 1979. The record breaker came here when Chip Ferguson hit Philip Bryant with a nine-yard touch. That made it 69-7. to Among the other highlights, how about a mere 100-yard interception return by Deion Sanders, also a new record. Final score from Bill Campbell Stadium tonight. 76 to 14 Florida State. Now the spirit of 76 was certainly evident in the FSU locker room. Uh, to overstate the obvious, Bobby Bowden was pleased to the max. Uh, line control the line of scrimmage. Defensive line uh, control the line of scrimmage. Uh, Tulsa is a good offensive football team. They've been that way all year. They've led. Gosh, they've led hell about everybody they played. So they did in Arkansas. They did Arkansas. Arkansas been 24 nothing. But we, every time we saw them play this year, we noticed every time they were on the board. The first game, they were ahead. Yeah. The old was getting bigger than the old. All I had to do was just take it up in there and run. Were you feeling better than you felt all season tonight? Um, I felt pretty good tonight. I think I came in a little bit overweight. I um, had some pounds last week. But um, overall, you know, I'm losing my focus tonight. I thought that we'd find out something about them tonight, Gary. I felt like if we were a good football team, we would come back and play like a good football team is supposed to play if they get beat, kind of like Auburn did to Ole Miss, kind of like Nebraska did to Illinois. And uh, if we came out and played a lousy game, I'd say we're, we're very much overrated. Scotty, what else is there to say? 76 to 14, the final from Bill Campbell Stadium tonight. Next week, it's on to Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and a battle with those Tar Heels.